My name is uh, Arthur Eugene Smith, otherwise known as Gene Smith. And I was born in Bon Terre, Missouri, and uh, lived on a farm all my, uh, for the first 17 years of my life. My parents were uh, Arthur E. Smith and Mabel Smith. I have two brothers, Bill, and uh, I think I said before I was born on uh, July the 3rd, 1925. I attended grade school in a one-room schoolhouse for uh, eight years. For, uh, this was between 1931 and 1939. My teacher during my first year of school was a man named Mr. Frank McKinney, and he was known as a extremely a uh, rough, mean teacher. And he lived in Irondale, and he had to walk to school, which was about three miles, so he came past my house. So my parents decided it would be a good idea if I'd walk with Mr. McKinney, and it scared me to death. Um, I got along all right with him, but some of the older kids would have trouble with him in, in school, and. He would get angry and send them out to get a switch to give them a whipping with, and uh, they would come back with a small switch, and he'd go send them back to get a newer, a bigger one. And I've seen him get them by one arm and whop them. Uh, anyway, I just went to school for, to him for one year. During my uh, school in that one-room grade school, there was uh, approximately 21 to 26 students, and that included every uh, every class. So we got sort of individual attention. Uh, during the seventh and eighth grade, I was the official janitor for the school. I was age 13 and 14. And my job as janitor, the main part of it, was get there about an hour ahead of the teacher and build a fire in the old wood stove. And at age 13, I didn't know much about building fires, so we had some cold mornings. Uh, my father had a contract with the school to cut the wood for the school, so I'd help him cut the wood, and then I'd go to the school and burn it, help to burn the wood. During the 30s, the weather was extremely hot. If you listen to the weather forecast now or the reports, they will say the high during so many years was in the 30s. And I can remember many times when it was 110 to 115 during the day and the low would get down to 90 and of course there was no air conditioning and uh, we kind of had a hard time. Uh, typical day on the farm uh, my father would get up about five o'clock and go out and feed the animals, do the chores, and come in about six. And mom would have a big breakfast, ham and eggs and toast, whole wheat bread, jelly. All of this food came from the farm. We bought very little groceries. And uh, after breakfast, Dad would go out, and if we had any hired hands to help with the farm work, well, they'd show up about seven and work till noon. And at noon, it was really important that we all came in at 12 o'clock, and Mom had a big dinner ready at 12. The noon, <clears throat> the noon meal was the big, the big meal of the day during those days. <clears throat> and we'd have one hour off for for noon for dinner and go back to work and usually many times during the summer we work till dark. Now mom in addition to doing the three meals a day she did canning, she milked the cows, fed the chickens, gathered the eggs and besides taking care of us three children. <clears throat> I don't know how she did it all. Uh, before I was old enough to work, 12 or 13, I spent most of my time in, in the creek, the local creek there, Wallen Creek. I'd go out after breakfast and stay till noon and 
fishing and playing with the playing in the creek with sometimes I go by myself or sometimes with some friends and nobody seemed to worry about anything I mean we were I was considered safe and uh, it was not the worries that they have nowadays about turning kids loose after uh, I got old, old enough to do some work while well, my creek time was cut short and some of the work that I did was feeding the horses and the cattle and the sheep, shucking corn, milking cows, hoeing in the garden and hoeing corn. And around 13, I guess it was, I, they let me start driving the old John Deere tractor and I did a lot of a lot of work with the tractor and I enjoyed working with the machinery. 1936, Dad bought a, a Delco light system uh, for our home, and so we were the first ones in the in the area to have electricity, have lights. Was, uh, there were no electricity around, no public electricity. This 32 volt Delco light system had a gasoline engine that had to run occasionally to keep the batteries charged. And my job during all that time was to run that gasoline engine and after I got home from school I'd fire that thing up and run it a few hours and that would charge the batteries and we'd have electricity. Uh, I enjoyed working with the machinery. My brother Bill always enjoyed working with the horses and I enjoyed working with the machinery. Uh, after grade school, uh, 1939 to 1943, I was in high school at Arndale High School. At that time, there was no, no U Highway, and no bridge across the river. So the only way to get to Arndale from our home was either to walk, or we'd go down the creek and ford the river and, and go to Arndale where the school was. Most of the time in the early years, I'd walk to school across a swinging bridge across Big River. And later on, we had a, a so-called school bus, which was an old bread truck. And we'd ride that, go down the river or down the creek and across the river to school. But if the river was high, we'd have to go through Hopewell and out to, Hope, out to Highway 8 and to Frank Clay and back to Arndale, which is about a 20 mile ride. Uh, during high school, when I was in the 11th grade, I decided I wanted to fly airplanes. That's what I wanted to do for a, life, a living. So I decided I wanted to uh, enlist in the Navy cadet program if possible. And I was told that uh, the Navy required a lot of math. And I'd taken uh, one year of uh, algebra but I wanted a second year of algebra so I could help me get in the Navy. My teacher at that time was Mrs. Ruth Hines, Ruth Province now. Well, she's passed away now, but uh, the high school was not teaching algebra two, but she agreed to teach algebra two the same time she was teaching her other students algebra one. So I had it, I'd sat at her desk and she'd work with me on algebra two. And uh, I didn't learn much about it, but she gave me a passing grade. Uh, I also took uh, typing from Miss Hines. And my typing grade wasn't too good, and, but she saw fit to pass me. The, um, the Navy required that I be either in the top half or the top two thirds of my class. I don't remember which. And the typing grade was the, the key to me being in that position. So she gave me a grade good enough that I got in the, in the top half or the top two thirds. And, and as a result, I was able to get in the Navy. And that changed my whole life. So I owe my, owe my whole life to Ruth Hines. Um, I graduated from high school in June of 1943 and enlisted in the Navy about that same time. 
uh, I was called in in August and during my Navy career I went through aviation mechanic school and aviation gunnery school and uh, aviation cadet training. I had four hours and four tenths of steerman time, flight time, when the war was over and I got out of the Navy and went back to the farm. Uh, I stayed on the farm approximately one year and I still wanted to be in aviation so I went to school in St. Louis and got a pilot's license and a mechanic's license and I went to work in North Carolina for Piedmont Airlines. I worked for Piedmont for 38 years, three years as a mechanic, three years as a co-pilot and 32 years as captain. And I owe all of this to Ruth Hines giving me a good grade in typing. Uh, I got out of the Navy on Friday the 13th and I've been lucky ever since. I now live on the same farm where I grew up, have an excellent family, good health, and I have a lot to be thankful for. So there. Okay. <laughs> um, let's, let's talk a little bit more about uh, your cures when you're uh, in grade school at home. Things you did on the farm. You didn't have to. Did you ever plow with mules or horses? Oh yes, yes, yes. I've plowed with mules. And. Uh, and how did you go about doing that? Since I we we have we have two we had two mules and they were born the same year I was. Did you name them? Kate and Jude. Kate and, Jude. Kate and Jude. They had different personalities, and uh, we would use them on the farm for everything. And uh, I'd plow, plow with them, or haul wood, or haul gravel, or whatever. And they were real gentle, and we took real good care of them. We would work those mules real hard. They'd get hot. But at noon, they, when we came in to eat, they came in, they got a bushel of oats or something and uh, treated them good. Uh, I used to cut hay with those mules, with an old mower. And at that time, I was interested in beekeeping. And cutting hay is really hard on the mules. I mean, they'd pull them, they'd be sweating. And, so I'd let them rest a lot, and I had this book on beekeeping, and I'd keep that under the seat, and I would let them rest and read the book on beekeeping. So they got more rest than we did hay cutting. But, uh, and how did you put up the hay at that time? You cut the hay, and I guess you didn't bale it. No, we didn't bale it. Later on, we bale. Well, we cut the hay, and we put it in the barn loose and we would pick it up by hand and put it on a wagon, which the mules were pulling the wagon. And one man's on a stack of hay and the other guys are throwing the hay to them and they'd place it. And they'd get it to the barn and we had this device that would pick up the hay with a fork and it would go up to the top of the barn and over and a rope would be pulling that and the mules would be on the other end of the barn pulling the rope and that would take the hay up. And I used to do that a lot, handle the mules on the other end. Uh, and to, to get the hay on the wagon, did you use a pitchfork? Mm -hmm, pitchforks. Was it a steel pitchfork or wood? No, it was steel. steel. It was steel, wood handle. We still have those forks around there, some of them. When did you get the John Deere tractor? Dad bought the John Deere tractor, a used one in Model A, and I think it was probably 1937 because it's a 30, 36 model, I think. I'm not sure about this. But in 36 or 37 is when he bought the first tractor. And I remember he stayed up bargaining with Ray Larkins from Esther, who was a John Deere man. And they stayed up most of the night arguing back and forth. And I think Ray Larkins probably took some cattle and I don't know what on trade. <laughs> Or the tractor. 
We still have the tractor. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. okay, My brother has it now. What else did he do with the tractor? Oh. Did he also have to buy a, a mower and a rake and things? Or what, what kind of attachments did he have? No, we didn't use that tractor for mowing or raking. Uh, we had a plow. The main thing was plowing with the tractor. That was the big thing. Use it to grind feed with. We had a feed grinder with a great big belt and we'd get the tractor out there and put the belt on it and grind the feed. Oh, and cultivating corn. It was a cultivator for the corn, for the tractor. It was a John Deere tractor with the two small wheels in front and the cultivator, so you'd, you'd drive down the rows of corn and the uh, cultivator would plow both row, two rows at a time. I used to do that a lot. And you said you cut firewood? Yeah, we cut firewood with a cross-cut saw, a hand saw. One, on, one guy on one end and one on the other. So what was that whole process as far as uh, harvesting the firewood? How do you how did you follow the trees and did you? Yeah, it? yeah, we'd we'd cut the trees down and cut them into logs, and then we'd haul them to a we had a a sawmill with a one horsepower I mean a one cylinder tractor to run the or machine to run the saw, and we'd, one man would push the logs up and the other guy would be taking the wood off as it sawed in the blocks. That used to be a big dangerous job, a great big saws. You had your own sawmill? Yeah. It was not considered a sawmill, but it it just cut, it didn't make boards, it just made logs, made like big blocks, time. yeah. Pieces of wood, yeah. But your main purpose was for firewood? For firewood, yeah. Because all of our home was heated with that wood. And in the school, like I said, the year he had contracted. And it was you and your dad and your brother used to cut a double cross cut so mm -hmm. to cut it into like 12 or No, that was to cut the tree down and to cut it up into logs to haul it. Okay, how did you cut it up into pieces for firewood? That's what we did with this saw that I'm on, this so called sawmill. So, okay. Yeah. Then we'd take the big logs and put it on that There was no machine. chainsaws yet? No, they hadn't invented chainsaws, no. And then you had to split them up with, with an axe? Yeah, we split them with an axe or a wedges, wedges. Um, hmm, something else I was going to say, but I've forgotten. How did you pay the hired help? Uh, you had a pretty good sized farm. You had hired help, I guess. Yeah, we had a pretty good size. Dad had a breeding farm. He had horses and jacks, and people would bring their mares in there to be bred for miles around, including Belgrade and Caledonia. And uh, what do you mean by what, what's a jack? Uh, to get a mule, you need a mare, which is a female horse, and a jack, which is a, a donkey. I guess, and you breed the jack to the mare and you get a mule. And at that time, the main power in Missouri was mules. Four tractors really got established. And uh, people would ride their mares in there for miles around to breed. So we, uh, that was a big, big thing. And we had to carry water to these animals. We had two jacks and two stallions. And I, many times I had to carry water, we all did, to carry water to them in the barn because they stayed in the barns all the time, most all the time. Carry the water from? From a spring, we had a spring. And, uh, in buckets, one bucket in at a bucket time? In bucket at a time, yeah, buckets. Just carrying them by hand, one bucket? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so good to have electricity when you could have a pump. <laughs> oh, yeah, tell me, tell me about this uh, Delco. Uh, Light system? Yeah. That was a popular thing back then. Yeah, it was. Well, not a popular thing. Yeah, it wasn't. It was probably unique if you had one. Now. We were in our area. We were the first people to have them. It was a... And that was about what time? Uh, uh, roughly 1936. I you guess... when you got electric for... Electric? Not for sure, but I suspect it was about 1940 or 41. 
somewhere yeah, in that. Quite a good job that the Delco system do as far as providing light. It did. It did pretty well. Uh, the lights were dimmer than they are, but. Uh, but you did have electric lights in. There. Yeah, we had electric lights in the house. Did you have a refrigerator? Mm hmm. Did you have an ice box before that? We had an ice box before that, but we, the main thing we used was a spring. There's a little spring house, running water, and it had an area with water like six inches deep and another water place where the water was 12, 18 inches deep. And uh, take the milk and put it in there and everything. Watermelon you put in the spring and when it got cold you ate it and that was one of our treats. Uh, but the Delco light system had, like I say, a, I'm guessing a three horsepower gasoline engine hooked up, built down to a generator DC and uh, we had 16 2 volt batteries, glass batteries. It set up real big and you'd run that machine a few hours a week, maybe 10 hours a week, and that'd keep the batteries charged and we'd have electricity, have lights. That's yeah. pretty modern convenience. Yeah, that was modern. I used to think that dad was old fashioned, but looking back, I think he was a little ahead of the. <laughs> Spring did a pretty good job of preserving the food. Yeah, oh yeah, it did good. And I mom, guess you had a smokehouse. We had a smokehouse. We smoked, uh, smoked meat, smoked hams, and uh, that's something that Dad did to make a little extra money because there was hardly any money in the 30s, and he'd smoke these hams, and normally he'd get 10 cents a pound for the meat or 15 and. He'd smoke these hams for, I don't know, three weeks or whatever and sell some of them to a local doctor and all and get a dollar a pound and we thought he was rich. <laughs> Did you have a radio? Later we had a radio, but that brings... Electric radio or a battery operator? Battery, battery, battery. I don't think we had any radio, but that brings up a story on the radios. The first radio I ever heard was a man named Carb Hunt, and he lived across about a half a mile from our house. In 1932, when Roosevelt was elected, and I was, I guess, 31 or 32, I was six years old, and my dad carried me on his shoulder across the woods to listen to the radio to hear the election when Roosevelt was elected the first time. Uh, and the radios then, he had, we had to use a headset and he had batteries all over, A batteries and I don't know what kind of batteries, but uh, that's the first radio I'd ever heard. So, uh, but later on, and I don't remember when, we did have radios. And you made a special walk just to hear Roosevelt. <laughs> yeah. And then he was elected every time until I was, uh, 21 years old when he quit being president, when he died. <laughs> Your dad was what, was he was interested in Roosevelt because he wanted him to get in or just what? I don't really know. Uh, I never did quite understand my folks' political thing. They never were very strong on anything uh, political, but. Uh, but he went to the effort to walk somewhere to hear a, well, somebody talk. Yeah, to hear the radio. Uh, they were, think, was it more to him just to the radio? No, no, it was for the election, for sure. People back in those days were more interested in politics uh, than they are now, I think. They were they were interested in what's, what's happening. So they had, felt like they had more at stake or something. Then. Maybe so, yeah. Well, this was during the deepest part of the Depression, and people were starving, seriously. And they were looking for somebody. To... They were looking for some change, yeah. something. Uh, People used to come down the creek or come up to the house and knock on the door and, and ask if we had any work or any food for them. Uh, it was rough time. There were no no welfare. People used to come down from St. Louis and and buy five acres of land and and try to grow crops, grow something to eat, and they didn't know how to grow it, and it usually didn't work out. And land was so cheap then, you could buy 10 acres for $100. And uh, two or three cases, the 
people gave up and dad bought the land from them. And so our farm expanded during that time. Um, do you remember what kind of music you listened to? If you had a radio, if you... I remember dad used to listen to country and western music and I never was very much musically inclined and I... Uh, didn't listen My, to Grand Ole Opry or anything? Yeah, yeah, that was one of the things Dad used to listen to. My music, uh, my uncle was a, a mechanic in World War I, and he played guitar. And so I tried to learn to play the guitar, and I'm not musically inclined, so I never did do very good, but he, he was uh, very good playing this guitar and it was a Spanish type guitar. Anyway, that brings up another thing. That's one reason I got in aviation because he used to tell us stories about World War I airplanes. Got me interested in flying and... Uh, yeah, the planes are just barely getting started in World War I. I know it, I know it. It's, it's, it's hard to believe, but uh, when I was born in 1925, aviation was what, 21 years old. Wright Brothers first flew in 1903. Yeah, I think they were dropping bombs in World War I, but they were dropping them out by hand. Right? Yeah, I think they did some by hand, and, and yeah. Yeah, they were just getting started. I've watched a lot of programs recently on the TV about it. And you grew up you said, around Arndale. Yeah, Arndale. between Arndale and Potosa, yeah. Is that close to Asia Glen? No, not. Well, fairly close. I don't even know exactly where Hazel Glen is. Yeah, I've heard of it. Very small place. It is, yeah. I've always heard of it, and I don't... It's uh, It's northwest of, of Irondale, and Rock Springs was a school. And... Uh, what kind of... Do you remember any of the businesses in Irondale at the time? Yeah, there were... Two grocery stores, and of course the bank, and the garage, Chet Province's garage. Uh, there was three three little stores, uh, and at noon from the school we would walk down to get our lunch, and uh, my money for lunch was ten cents unless I took my lunch, and the ten cents bought me a. Pepsi and a cookie, and that's probably why my teeth fell out of it. <laughs> Were the roads paved? Oh, no. No pavement. Yeah, Main Street and Pinedale was paved. Remember 21 Highway was paved yet? I don't remember 21 Highway. Uh, I'm not absolutely sure where the streets were paved in Arndale or not then. I have a lot of old pictures of them not being paved and I can't remember. I don't know. When you first went up to enlist in the Navy, do you remember how you got there? Yeah, I rode a bus. What bus was it? I don't remember. Would you think it was a Wallen bus? Probably was a, um, yeah, it was a Wallen bus. I have a story to tell about that too. Okay. Uh, Coming back from enlisting in the Navy, I was sitting in the back seat of the bus and I'm watching the driver in the mirror and he's just about to go to sleep. And we got to Potosa here on the curve up the top of the hill and he dozed off. And I started yelling and I got him awake enough to go around the curve. And uh, otherwise we'd have had a bad day. <laughs> But I could see him in that mirror now, dozing off. And the rest of that story is, when I got home, I'd left my billfold with all my Navy stuff laying in that seat in the bus. So we had to call down to the next bus stop. I've forgotten where it was. Maybe it's farming. Anyway, we called down there and we found it. We got my stuff back. But uh, did you have a phone on your farm? Yeah, we had a phone later on, a crank type. We had a phone most of the time when I was growing up. Your, your first phone, do you remember how it worked? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, it was on the wall, it's a great big box thing, and you go up and crank three, three longs and one short, and three longs, I think, was our call, or something like that. And uh, the operator was over in Irondale above the bank, and you'd tell her who you wanted to talk to, and she'd plug in the wires, usually listen to your conversation. Could other people listen into your conversation? Or on your Anybody on the party line. And there were three or four on the party line. Anybody could pick up the phone. So you didn't have a phone number. You had a ring. You had a ring that signaled the operator. Mm -hmm. And then you talked to her, and she connected you. To, you had to tell her who you wanted to talk to. Yeah, yeah. Now how far away could you call? Was I don't it, know. Was it common to uh, you know, so you could call anywhere in Ireland, but could you say call the Potosi? Yeah. Or St. Louis. I think so. Yeah, I think so. And what, that phone, I guess it was battery operated too. It had some kind of battery in it. I guess it did, yeah. It has, yeah. I don't remember much about that phone except, I mean that. We have one at home now. It's not the original. We bought another one. It's, it looks just like the one that was up there. I think it had batteries. And you remember the next phone that you got after that? Next model phone? Like Model. No, I was gone in the Navy during that time, so I don't know when they got another kind. Um, uh, did you used to come to Potosi quite a bit? Uh, did you come for entertainment or anything? Before you went into the service? Yeah, I came to Potosi a lot because... Are you when you came home on leave? Yeah, can't. there was a movie in Potosi, but I did, we didn't go to movies very much. Uh, but I came to Potosi a lot with my dad because of feed stores and all. A lot of them were over here. And, uh, yeah, it was gravel road and the Model A Ford, whatever. Model what, what, do you remember any of the business, businesses in Potosi? Uh, Sinclair Florist was in business then, and I knew Mr. Sinclair. And I remember when I got out of the Navy, my dad and I were talking to Mr. Sinclair, trying to decide what I ought to do in my life. And he thought I ought to be a automobile mechanic. Uh, there was a Silvey's feed store. And I knew the local, the Silvies that are here now, I knew them when they were little boys. There. And what else? Did you follow baseball? Baseball? I didn't follow too much, no. Did you play any sports in school? I played uh, a little bit of uh, basketball in school. Not a lot. I had a bad knee at that time. And, I didn't play a lot, but I, my brother was real good at it, but I never was that good at it. Um, what other activities do you have for entertainment? Did you have parties or so, some kind of socials or dances? I don't remember much about entertainment. Uh, you never took, did you dig any tiff? No, we didn't, we didn't dig tiff, but I remember when people used to dig tiff and lead and haul it into Potosi in their wagons. And Potosi was the dirtiest town in the country, I think, because then the people bring in their dirty wagons. And I just remember how dirty it was in Potosi from, uh, but we didn't, we didn't do that. No. Here. You run out of questions and your battery's running down. Yeah, so. <laughs> close to, uh, the timing might be pretty good. Okay. So, um, I guess I'll. Do you have any other notes on there? No, there was something else I was going to say, but I can't think of what it was. So, anyway, like I said before, I've been real lucky. Right place at the right time. And you pretty much been around this area the, all your life? Well, I left when I was 18 and went in the Navy, and then I came back for one year, and then I was gone for 30, 40 more years. I've been back here now for 19 years since I retired from the airline. And everybody asks me these questions about 
you know thus and so. And I remember the name, but I don't know the people. In fact, it's the people that I know are the older ones. So uh, I still have a little airplane. I still fly around here a little bit. And, uh, uh, well, why did Charger take me out? When do you want to go? Right now? <laughs> I won't charge anything. Yeah. I can take you up. Anytime, I guess. Weather's all right. Um, did you used to buy ice? Yes, we used to buy ice. And uh, also, when I was growing up, I decided to and one year we had extremely cold and we had uh, ice on the creek like 20 inches, 24 inches thick. So I'd been studying in high school about various things and I decided to bury a lot of this ice in sawdust, which I did. And of course we'd use ice to make ice cream. So we had ice up in the spring and didn't have to buy it. That was one of my experiments. The other, uh, the thing I did it might be of interest as I tapped maple trees and made maple syrup when I was in high school, just started high school. And it takes a lot of maple syrup to make, I mean a lot of sap to make a lot of maple, make a little maple syrup. Did you do any hunting? Yeah, I used to hunt a lot. Squirrels and rabbits, that's all. Because there was no turkey, no deer in the area at all. I guess during the Depression, I guess everybody's hungry, and uh, they were hunted down. It was, we had an old, we used to have an old man that worked for us, and he had a, a turkey call. And there were no turkeys. I said, well, why do you have turkey call? And he said, well, it used to be turkeys. And uh, it's, but what we hunted, we ate. Right. And, uh, I guess the Missouri Conservation has a Group hadn't got started with the, no, I don't think they. Like no, that. I don't think they'd start. I didn't. I you never, didn't I never did have a hunting license, but I hunted on our own land. But uh, I never did have a hunting or a fishing license in Missouri. I did in other states later on. Did but, I ask you if you had a car? No, I didn't you have a car. car. You didn't have a car. Did your dad drive a car? Yeah, yeah, Dad had various cars and trucks because we all. With our uh, trucks, we'd haul cattle and hogs to St. Louis. He did it all the time. And uh, going back to the old days some more, uh, hauling cattle to St. Louis, you had to be up about 3 o'clock in the morning and get them loaded, and especially with hogs. You had to get them up there before it got warm because they did not do good in the truck hauling. So I can remember now him getting up and waking me up to help him load them at 4 o'clock in the morning when it's cold or hot or something. And, uh, and when you gassed up, did you have gas, a gas tank on the farm or did you go to the gas station? We had gas tanks on the farm for the tractors later, but uh, gas stations for the other, you, for the tractors. Were they self-served? Self no, I don't think they were self-served. But I remember when you, if, uh, five gallon for a dollar was what you got. Well, <laughs> yeah, I, I knew they were self-served. but. I was thinking, I was, you, I was thinking you got really, really good service. Like two guys came out, one put gas in and one. One wiped the windshield, and, yeah. And washed the windshield and checked the oil. Sometimes I, I don't remember much about that, but uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to figure out too uh, some things. I'm interested in the highways during the time. Um, I'll probably be able to find something somewhere along the line, but I'm wondering. Wondered whenever 21 got paid, and I yeah. think at one time before World War II, I don't think it went all the way to St. Louis, and uh, I think it only went to Festus, maybe. And I think I, 21 didn't go through where it does now. It, no, it didn't go through there. It, it came down here and went through town, and up, okay. yeah, yeah, it went through town. Like I was telling you on the bus, we came back through town. It didn't. Uh, the old 21 is out here now. You can see it before you get to the bank, before you get to... No, no, I'm not... That is part of old 21. Yeah, that is part of old 21. 
And I guess that's where it went through, intersected through town somehow through there. Yeah. And then they straightened it out. Yeah. Yeah. And I was thinking it wasn't paved all the way up either. I can't remember about the paving when it was or what. I know at one point it was a lousy road to drive on because it was concrete and it was narrow. Yeah. And it had little. Yeah, there. yeah, I remember that. that lip, yeah, really I remember that. 67 was like that too. 67, I remember. I remember going to St. Louis with Dad in the trucks on 21 and also on 67, so I don't know why we went each way, but I don't know. Guess we're through. I'm sure you think things later. Well, let's go fly. Let's go flying then. <laughs>